This is the last video in a series in which we have derived Maxwell relations and see how useful they are. In this particular video, we're going to see how we can obtain equations of state from Maxwell relations. All right, so an equation of state is uh, simply a relationship between pressure, volume, and temperature, which are the variables that define the state of a system at constant composition, that is, when the composition of the system is not changing. All right, so uh, in our first chapter on gases, we saw that there's a fundamental uh, equation of state for a gas, which is the ideal gas equation that shows you the relationship between these variables, right? And uh, uh, we also saw that this only applies to ideal or perfect gases, and then when you have real gases, then you have to think about corrections, and the Van der Waals equation of state is one of those equations of state uh, that tries to incorporate attractions and repulsions between gas molecules, and it has this form. m squared over v squared, and then v minus mb, and then nRT. All right, so all this, these two are equations of state. Now, but they only apply to either gases or real gases through the Van der Waals model. Our question then is, are there any universal equations of state that tell you what the pressure of a substance is, regardless of whether the substance is a, is a liquid or, or a solid or a gas or an ideal gas or a real gas, right? Do we have equations of state that are universally true? And the answer is yes, uh, there are, and uh, we're going to see that in this video with the help of the Maxwell relations. Right, so uh, uh, we're going to be begin just by showing how you can obtain an equation for pressure using material that we have seen in prior videos. Okay, so for example, uh, we're going to recover here uh, the partial derivative of the internal energy with respect to the volume at constant temperature that again we have derived uh, in a previous video. And that partial derivative looked like this, partial derivative of uh, the internal energy with respect to the volume at constant temperature that is equal to uh, the temperature, then expansion coefficient over kappa t, which is the isothermal compressibility, minus the pressure. When we derive this expression, we said that this applies to uh, any substance, right? So that's simply just how the internal energy changes with volume isothermally. And we also noted that this was a very simple relation because all these things can be either controlled or easily determined, right? Pressure, temperature, easily controlled, uh, expansion coefficient, compressibility, they can be determined, right? So this is going to allow us to write an expression for pressure for any substance, regardless of whether it's a gas, a liquid, or a solid. We simply start for pressure and we're done, right? So pressure is going to be equal to um, T alpha K sub T minus the partial derivative of the internal energy with respect to volume at constant temperature. Okay, we can actually uh, take this if you want a little bit uh, further ahead and uh, simply notice that this term okay, is right here uh, in this Maxwell relation. So uh, an even more general expression than that, if you don't have the value for the com uh, expansion coefficient and compressibility, would be say, simply T times uh, the partial derivative of pressure with respect to temperature uh, volume minus the partial derivative of the internal energy with respect to volume at constant temperature. Again, this is an equation of state that is entirely universal, this one or that one. Uh, they're entirely universal. So you can calculate with the pressure of a substance should be if the temperature is given, and then uh, you know the rest of these parameters. Okay, so uh, that's kind of a nice complement to the early work that we did in gases, where we saw those equations of state that were far simpler. All right, so notice that in this particular equation, we actually have a relationship between pressure and temperature. Volume is also included in the expression, but not explicitly so. Uh, so a question then is, well, do we have an expression in which we can compute the volume, an equation of state in which we can, we can compute the volume uh, uh, directly uh, from easy to determine variables, uh, much as we have here for the presser? And the answer is yes, and that's uh, uh, the last uh, bit that we're going to see in this Maxwell relation series. 
Right, so if we uh, now go back to uh, the partial derivative of the enthalpy with respect to pressure and recover uh, that expression that we derived in a prior video, okay, we saw that this was equal to the volume 1 minus T alpha. Again, there's, there's an earlier video in which we saw how to derive that using Maxwell relations. Well, so notice that here you actually have the volume and we can solve for it and then that will be our uh, equation of state where we can easily calculate the volume of uh, any substance. Right, so let's develop this a little bit, distributing that uh, common factor we get to uh, V alpha T and then solving for the volume, we're going to get that the volume is equal to uh, V alpha t plus the partial derivative of the enthalpy with respect to pressure at constant temperature. Okay, notice that in this particular uh, case we have here a V alpha term and that V alpha term uh, can be uh, coded in terms of a Maxwell relation uh, using that Maxwell relation at the bottom from the Gibbs energy. So you have to have the volume they would be equal to T, and then the partial derivative of volume with respect to uh, temperature, constant pressure, plus the partial derivative of the enthalpy with respect to pressure, constant T. Okay, so again, here you have another equation of state that tells you the relationship between uh, variables that determine the state of a uh, of, uh, system. Right here, in this case, we have solved it for volume, function of temperature, and then you have all the properties that you have to write right there. Okay, so notice that these equation of states are, are not as, as easy as what we have for the ideal gas or the perfect equation of states because here you have partial derivatives. Right, so these are uh, um, other measurements that you would need to, to perform in order to carry that over. However, these equation of states, uh, equations of state are entirely universal. That means that again, they apply to solids, liquids, gases, whatever. Okay, so they, they're useful that way. All right, so uh, this finishes our series and Maxwell relations, and uh, from now on we'll move on to understand uh, to a little bit level, uh, a little bit deeper level of of uh, insight uh, the Gibbs energy.